Conga Tierra is a game for up to six players that my gaming group has enjoyed immensely. It combines elements of bluffing, strategy, luck, and area control in a way that keeps everyone interested in the game, even if they are not in a particular battle. The main problem we had with the game is the playing board is way too small. Here's an example of the second edition of the game from Fantasy Flight Games compared to the cars. This thing measures 7 inches by 10 inches, which is smaller than a regular sized piece of paper. The third edition by Z-Man Games is slightly larger, measuring about 8.5 by 11, which is the size of a regular sheet of paper. This is such a great game that I wanted to make a larger version of it. However, the biggest problem is that you need a larger game board. So I spent a week drawing a game board from scratch. I have a link to the map in the comments so you can print out your own copy. Keep in mind that you still have to buy the game in order to play it. Z-Man Games still offers the game for sale, at least they still did at the time this video was recorded. So I recommend that you go to their website to get it, or you might also find it on Amazon. For instructions on how to build the castle ponds, you'll want to go to the Hearst Arts website and go down to the Projects section, kind of down near the middle of the page. Click on the Projects button. It'll take you to the Projects page. Scroll to the bottom where you see Other Projects. The Condottier Castle Ponds button is where you want to go. From there, you'll have all the instructions on which mold to use, how to prepare the mold, how many castings you need, and exactly how to arrange the blocks to make all of the ponds that you see here. The Hearst Arts website also has links to the map file so you can print out your own copy. I give permission for anyone to print out a copy of the map as long as it's for their own personal use. This map measures 30 inches wide by 20 inches tall. If you want the absolute best looking map, you'll need to take the file to a place that does large format printing. Many times office supply stores such as Staples can do this service. But be sure to check around because I've seen price variations from $20 up to $40 for the exact same print. If you'd rather use your own printer at home, I've also included a PDF file allowing you to print the map in sections and tape it together. This will not look as nice, but it still works well to play the game on. On the PDF file, you will notice there's an extra page after the map. It has six pass cards and three round markers on it. I added these because our gaming group liked them for the way we play the game. If you laminate this last sheet and cut the cards apart, you can use the back side to write down your current score using a dry erase marker. This makes the game a lot faster because other players won't need to constantly ask you how many points you've accumulated. When you choose to pass during any battle, simply flip the card over to reveal the pass side of the card, so everyone will know that you are permanently out of the battle. The round markers are for a game variant that we like. These are stacked in order with round one on the top. After the first battle, this marker is moved to the bottom, revealing the round two marker. By our house rules, after the third battle is fought, all players must throw in the rest of their cards, but they are allowed to keep one card if they still have one to keep. Then cards are re-dealt for the next three rounds. This gives players a chance to pass the first couple of rounds if they don't have a strong hand to begin with, but it also cuts out the nonsense of battles continuing on and on for the last two players who have cards left. Another fun variation that we had done is to introduce a traitor card. In the Z-Man edition, there are three bishop cards used in the original version of the game that we did not want to use. Originally, playing one of these bishops would end the battle with no winner. What we did instead was to use a black marker to fill in the circle in the upper left and painted a white card icon on it. I also used white paint to put a mask on each of the bishops. These three cards are now used as traitor cards. If you choose to play one of these traitor cards during your turn, you will discard it and declare, there is a traitor in your midst. Then you may take any card from another player's battle line and put it into your battle line. This person was actually a traitor working for your side all along and is only now being revealed. This card can be any card in a player's battle line, including a mercenary, a heroine, a drummer, or a spy. Well, that's it for this video. Even if you don't want to make a larger version of the game, I strongly suggest that you buy this game while it's still in print from Z-Man Games. If you decide you want to make the castle pawns, I have other videos following this one showing how to cast these pieces from a mold and paint them up. Anyway, thanks for watching.